open is your mind really? How accurate is your ability to perceive the truth? That's kind of the core of the news literacy course. The purpose of this video is to think about some humility. Can we trust our own perceptions? To walk through these issues today with us, I've got Dr. Nancy Franklin, who is an expert in cognition and memory and our ability to suss out the truth from what we observe. So it turns out, scientists like Dr. Franklin have been able to observe that many of the obstacles, barriers to our ability to perceive accurately are sort of built into us. Right. So talk about that. What is the... So we are um, sophisticated cognitive systems. And what that means is that we're much more... Um, skilled in many ways than a video camera. A video camera can only capture what's presented to it in the real world. What we can do is fill in, see meaning and connections between things, um, bring to bear what we already know, direct our attention based on all of that, and um, use the world around us to serve whatever purposes that we might have. And with all of that come a lot of biases. A lot of people think of their memory as kind of a data bank of videotapes. It is so not. <laughs> um, and the problems that, so one of the problems with that um, perception that people have is the overconfidence that comes from believing that it's, you know, it may very well be vivid. That doesn't mean that it's accurate. So one of the things that we often like to talk about in the course is source amnesia. Mm -hmm. I hear a piece of information, if it agrees with what I think, suddenly I didn't get it from a flyer on my, on my windshield in the parking lot, I got it from the Wall Street Journal. Talk about that a little bit. So we tend to be better at remembering content in a memory than remembering where it came from. It may mean that we believe a political ad Absolutely. and think of it as having sort of the ring of journalistic truth. Or we read a blog or we read a satirical article and we think it's news. That sort of wishful thinking that you brought up a minute ago helps to drive this as well. Because um, as we're being irrational, we tend not to be irrational randomly. Things move toward, again, what serves us best. And, and then in the end, you're trying to reconstruct what happened. That's what all of retrieval is. It's reconstructed. So memories are always up for grabs and you know whatever use you put a memory to when you retrieve it or whatever new information comes in whatever conversation you have with someone that memory can very easily and very routinely be altered confirmation bias is what confirmation bias is the tendency that we have instead of gathering all the information we need to get a complete picture and the right answer, we have some tentative idea already and we seek evidence only for that when we should actually be seeking out evidence against it. Because learning and, and progressing in our thinking is best done if you can knock down wrong currently held beliefs and then you can move forward rather than get stuck in whatever flawed thinking you have right now. What are some things I can do to make sure I'm not enthrall to my own beliefs and not open to information that might be truer? Um, the best thing you can do is um, be aware of these biases. You can't step outside the biases, but you can be aware of them and then do another round of evaluation of the information you have in light of knowing the sorts of slants that you bring to it. Um, it, it. So often it's overconfidence that leads people to stop gathering new information, to believe that their current opinion is accurate, to believe that they're understanding something correctly, as opposed to taking something and twisting it into whatever their current belief system is. And you don't need a second person in this equation, right? When you're going out and gathering information, when you're reading the news, when you're picking which news site to go to and which topics to learn about, you know, if you're already simplifying, there's no way you're going to get to correct thinking because you're starting with the wrong premises.
I'm troubled about search. I'm troubled about Google. I'm troubled about Facebook and Twitter because there's been an effort on the part of the programmers to act like artificial intelligence and simplify what we attend to, and they're choosing for us. And if we're not careful, we end up only encountering through search uh, stuff that confirms what we believe. Are, are you troubled by, by that? I'm very troubled by that. Why yeah. so? Because so much of what we come to believe and the sorts of information that we pay attention to comes from the social references that, that we um, pay attention to. So I have my peers and the people who I respect, and I can't know everything. You know, so if I'm trying to learn about whether it makes sense to drink wine for heart health or whatever the thing is, I rely on people I trust. And if I'm only getting half of the story because Google wants to be like my friends, you know, like the people who I would normally seek out and agree with, then I'm not going to get any sort of reasonable balance in the information I get. What advice would you give students? You know, one of the first principles I learned in being trained as a scientist is to love the gray area, you know, love the questions, and don't be so fast to, to need answers. We as humans want an answer that we can run with. You know, we want information in service of, okay, what do I do with it? And living in the gray isn't so comfortable. But also, I think for a lot of the stories that we should care about, they unfold over time anyway. So you have no choice if you're going to do it right, but to live in the gray for quite a while as more emerges. Okay, so what I want to say is thank you very much to Dr. Nancy Franklin, My who pleasure. has elaborated on these points far better than we could have. And I'm hoping that you won't have been misled by me, but instead you will have been led by Dr. Franklin.